In this video, we're going to test this soul arc until it overloads and shuts down. And after having used it the last few weeks, I can tell you, it's not going to be hard to do it. This thing keeps shutting down on us constantly. And when I say constantly, I'm saying every two to three days. Now we're not doing anything different than we used to do when running the GrowWatts, these white ones behind us. This particular model inverter is the Solark 12K. Now you would normally think that means 12,000 watts of output, but it doesn't. Uh, it's just the model number. This is rated for 9,000 watts. It says so on the sticker on the side, 9,000 watts of continuous AC output from the battery. So I have a big battery bank. It's completely 100% full. It's giant. I've got two watt cable, less than a, a 10 foot run. So everything is according to the manual and we're going to overload this and it's going to shut down. Now over the last few weeks that I've been using it, I can tell you it shuts down a lot and we're not doing anything different in the house than we used to run on these grow watt inverters. And these things we ran for months and never had them shut down on us. Now the pair of grow watts that I have behind me, uh, they're each rated at 5,000 watts. So combined, they're rated for 10,000 watts of output. This Solark is supposed to be rated at 9,000 watts of output. I have seen this shut down prior to reaching 9,000 watts. Now the very first thing that I can throw on is the electric water heater that's behind the camera off in the corner. If any of you have seen some of my old videos, you know that I've built this garage with a radiant floor slab. That is connected to solar hydronic panels, which are out on the roof. So we're heating the water, which is heating the slab. Most of the time, the solar is enough, but I do have a backup system, which is an electric water tank, which has a 4,500 watt, 240 volt electric water heating element inside of it, which is tied right here to this panel. So let me go ahead and turn it on. Now that's on and let's see how much we're currently drawing. Now over here, it says that we're drawing 4.62 kilowatts. I can hear the water heater just uh, starting to not boil, but it's heating up. And if we were to leave that on, we would hear the fans kicking on on the solar arc. I'm going to turn it off. Now that's the only load that I can run right now because we're actually on grid. So I'm going to go inside and I'm going to switch us. Now the reason why I had it on grid is because I wanted to make absolutely sure that the battery got 100% charged today. But it was a pretty cloudy day so I couldn't run the house and get the battery up to 100% at the same time. So I switched us to the grid. The battery is completely full 100%. Uh, so I'm trying to give the Solark every opportunity to have enough power uh, to kind of hit its rating. Now one of the questions a lot of people ask is what's the idle consumption of the Solark? Now this is with no loads. There's absolutely no loads on it whatsoever at this time. Everything is completely shut off. And if we look over here, the screen wants to tell us 20, 30 watts. However, uh, we can be more accurate by reading off this shunt. That's a Victron smart shunt. Now this is an old cell phone with the Victron app installed. It's connected to the smart shunt using Bluetooth. And so it's a wireless monitor and it's showing 71 watts of power being consumed. Now I've confirmed this with a friend of mine who also owns the Solark and he also has a Victron shunt and has confirmed the same thing that that is not accurate for what the Solark is actually consuming sitting here idle. We're currently running everything on the Solark. I did pull out the Blue Eddy and I'm running two lights behind the camera on the Blue Eddy. So when we overload and everything shuts off, at least those two lights will stay running. We are currently pulling 1.11 kilowatts for running the garage and house. So we're looking at this number for 1.08 kilowatts that's going to the house and 1.15 uh, being drawn. So we're gonna put up the efficiency of that. All right, so now let's start loading this up with a few more things. So if we come over here and we turn on this circuit breaker, that's the big water heater. 
Now if we tap on this, we can find out what each leg is drawing. You can see we're pretty even across the board, just 80 watts difference. Now let's add a space heater. You can see the bottom one, we're up to 4300 watts on the bottom. What happens if we add another space heater? So let's throw another little space heater on it. So now we're over 4,500 watts on one of the legs and everything just shut off. Now, as you just saw, this solar converter shut down with a total load on it of 7,500 watts because we went over 4,500 watts for one of the two legs. There's phase one, phase two, or L1, L2, uh, the two hot legs coming out of it. That's what we use here in North America. And it overloaded and shut down. Now, it did automatically restart after a couple of minutes, and we're back on it right now. This would be similar if you purchased two 120 volt inverters. You can do that with say the Growatt. The Growatt has a 3000 watt model or these yellow ones that I have over here. These are from SMA. They're 120 volts only, uh, which means that if you go over the one leg, uh, then you overload it. So this is really a 4,500 watt per leg inverter. You can't go over that, at least not with my testing. I haven't seen it. Now, unfortunately, what that means is that sometimes it's overloaded well below the 9,000 watt rating, which, you know, was a surprise when I first got it because it's, they charge such a premium price for this unit that I was really expecting it to kind of hit 9,000 and probably go over it. I was not expecting this to shut down so readily uh, below 9,000 watts. I'm like, I'm below 9,000 watts on my house, so why is it shutting down? Uh, and so that was a surprise when I first got it, and now I understand what's going on. If you need this inverter because of the AC coupling option or the back feeding option, uh, then just be aware that it really is limited to 4,500 watts per phase. Now the pair of grow watts that I have over here, they're 10,000 watts total at 240 volts. I'm using an auto transformer, which I've talked about a lot in some past videos. That auto transformer is giving me uh, the split phase giving me the neutral. Uh, so these really can do a full 10,000 watts even with an imbalance between the two phases uh, because of that auto transformer and just the way that they're set up that way. Yes, you could solve this problem. And when I say problem, I mean that I'm not getting the full 9,000 watts out of it before it shuts down. So that's what I'm referring to as a problem. But you know, if it if you don't need that, it's not necessarily a problem for you. Uh, but in my house, I tend to uh, be up in that area. I'm aware that I can't run every single 240 volt appliance all at the same time. That's not what we were trying to do here. We we're just running our day-to-day -day life the same way that we did with the yellow SMA inverters and the same way that we do with the GrowWatt inverters. And they didn't shut down on us. It's only the Solark. And the reason is that imbalance between the two phases. Think of this as two separate inverters, each 4,500 watts, and each one 120 volts. And if you think of it that way, then uh, you can probably work within the capacity of this inverter. Now, I get asked a lot from you viewers uh, how to backfeed the grid or how to tie the grid into inverters to charge the batteries. Now, I personally don't have any of my stuff tied to the grid. Uh, none of, nothing backfeeds the grid. I don't use the grid to charge the battery. I have a manual transfer switch inside the house and I am almost all the time on my off-grid system and very rarely do I have to switch back to the grid. When I do switch back to the grid, I just run everything on the grid and I wait till the next sunny day to come out. The sun then recharges the battery and I can switch back. So unfortunately, I'm just not good at answering your questions on uh, how efficient is this at back feeding the grid or how to use the grid to recharge the batteries. Sorry, that that's just not how I run the system. But go ahead and think about the first 
time that overloaded and what happened? <laughs> um, I think it may have been something as simple as putting on a burner and the toaster. One burner and the toaster and it just shut off. So now I have to be really careful about what's on and what's not. And I don't like to think like that. I just want to be able to make breakfast and not have to worry about the power going out. We have an electric range, which means an electric stovetop and an electric oven. So when Elena says a burner, uh, she's referring to uh, one of the electric heating elements on top. Now this is a resistive ceramic heating element. And the big one that uh, is what was combined with the toaster and threw us off, uh, that is a 3000 watt element. <laughs> so we had that and the toaster uh, and then a bunch of other just lights and TV. But lights and TV just don't add up to a whole lot these days with LEDs. <laughs> it was a surprise. To me, it felt like we went back three years to the 6,000 watt Ames inverter that we used to have. Uh, and we've kind of been running the household as if we were on that. I've been uh, bugged a little bit here to get the solar out of the way <laughs> and get us back on the other system. Yeah. <laughs> I like not having to worry. Yeah. Uh, so thank you for watching this very quick update on how the Solark is going. If you like the videos, please like, subscribe, comment, and share.